Welcome back to the final video in the charting series, how to build a chart with TMS Web Core. Now we're going to add user interaction to the chart. We will open a pop-up window with additional information to the data that is being shown in the chart. Formally, this is known as a drill down because the um, chart shows aggravated values and the pop-up will then show the values that this aggregated value is based on. This is actually where we left off in the last part where we just built the basic chart. Just again, the hint, the uh, X data server has to be running in order for this to work because we'll do some design time work now and this will only be possible if the X data server is running in the background. Let's add another form to the project. Be aware we are doing TMS web development. So we have a separate menu item for this, create a new TMS web form. It's added to the project as unit3.pass. I'm going to save it. I named the unit uformschools. Matching that, I'll name the form form schools. This will make it the data type tformschools. And I'll also take care of the fact that the IDE doesn't create this form automatically. How do I do this? We go to project options. And then in the application forms, I'll move it over to the available form side. I just want form main to be created when the application is started. I want to create that form manually. The data on this form is pretty simple. We'll have a button to close the form and we'll have a grid showing all the values. So let's start with the button, T web button. We align that at top to make it easy and we'll call the button, button close. The grid, same thing. TWebDB grid is the component that we use. I'm speeding this up a little bit because we've done this before in another video. I don't want to bore you. So we call this grid. And this is now where it gets interesting. The grid is aligned AL client. And I make the form itself a little bit smaller using the structure view. I'll make it smaller because this is supposed to be a pop up window in the end. And I'm going to pick another caption. The caption is going to be close window. Perfect. So how do we get data into the grid? It's exactly the same approach that I've shown you with showing all the information. So we need typing X data, a web connection, and we need a data set X data web data set. The connection again, TTP localhost port 80. Clicks, we connected. Let's name the data set data set. That's it. And the connection connection. Again, as pointed out in part two, right now it's connected. But this time before I run the application, I'm going to change that. Again, the hint, the connection is already connected. That means as soon as the form is ready, the uh, connection is being established and as soon as the connection has been established on connect is called okay so the data set has to be hooked up to the connection and this time we're going to show entities again of schools so that is all well and done and now we can select fields again that we want to display so we go to the field editor and say add fields and let's select a couple that are interesting for us. I think the name and the address is interesting. And of course we want the number of students. And I think that's plenty of information, maybe even the city. Okay. And okay, that's it. And now the final step, we have to hook up the grid to the data set for that. Of course we need a data source. We type data source and then we have the tweb data source and the data source links the data set we can use the ide for this to the grid so we name this data source sign it so we assign the data source and of course we only have data source and there you go we have our grid we double click the grid and here we see that we have four default columns we delete the one we don't need name we set the width to 100 or let's say 200 and we set the address to 100 and the city and students will leave as is perfect right now we don't have any interaction to fill the data set with data 
and uh, that's actually something we have to correct. So we have to implement the onConnect event, and that does nothing but dataset.load. And of course, we have to implement the close button with self.close. That's all the pop-up window does. Right now, the grid would show all the values because dataset does point to all the records of school and there's no query string. So right now, there would be no filter at all. All the schools would be shown. This is definitely not the behavior we want, but of course, before we show the form, we have the chance to modify this from the main form. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you now. Because the main form has to trigger the pop-up window. And where do we do that? Well, the Google chart has actually a pretty decent event for this, which is called on select. On select gives us the chance to interact with the user as soon as he clicks on one of the bars. Actually, I should rephrase on one of the bars. Of course, you can have many different type of charts. For example, if you have a pie chart, the on select event is triggered when you select one of the segments of the pie. The only difficult thing showing different forms in a TMS web core application is that you can't use the standard create constructors. There are specialized create constructors for these kinds of applications, so to speak. There's a pretty good chapter in the documentation about it. However, I'm going to explain it very detailed so you can't go wrong here. The chart select, what is it supposed to do? It has, of course, to find out what kind of entry was selected in the chart and then has to pass this information onto the pop-up so the pop-up can filter the values accordingly. And of course, it has to create the pop-up form and to show the pop-up form. Let's start with that. So we have the instance of a form and this form is of course of data type T form schools. And of course, we need to add this to the users clause. So in order to use this, we need to say users and I hardly ever can remember if it is supposed to be placed after the resource or before. Let me place it here. U form schools. And now we create the instance. But how do we create the instance? And this is where many users of TMS Web Core struggle at first because it is not simply create. No, it's create new. And you see, this is a method from TMS Web Core because you also see here the file name property, which gives you the chance to load a different HTML file for design, except the standard one. No, usually the HTML file for design associated with the form is the name of the form, .html. But of course you can specify a different layout if you wanted to. So this is the one of the main reasons why we used create new. Create new. And here you see all the overloads that are available. We are going to use the one that allows us to specify a method that is being called after the form has been created. And this is just like with the X data server when we execute our query, we don't know when the form has been created completely. So this line here that I'm typing now, L form pop-up equals true to make it a pop-up form and not a full-blown window actually is executed right away, even before the L form instance has been initialized completely. So L form show modal actually does not mean it's being shown right away. It basically tells the L form instance show yourself as soon as possible after you have been created. Okay, and here again we have another means after show modal to interact after the form is being closed, we have to take care of releasing the form and all that kind of stuff. So we have the means to access the form when it's being closed in another method, which is called after show modal. After create, after show modal, of course, have to be implemented now. So let me start with the procedure that is called after the form has been shown after show modal. And the result is a value T modal result that is the parameter that is given to us, which would allow us to basically look for us OK button, cancel button, if we wanted to distinguish that. However, we don't want to. And another thing that's 
interesting and uh, I'll be honest with you I had to look this up myself in the documentation there is no need to call free the framework will take care of that for you so actually for this example after show modal is empty however why am I showing you this if you had any values that have been entered in the pop-up and they wanted to use these values at this point you can use l form dot in order to to use properties from the pop-up form you still can access this it has not been freed yet so at this point would be the transfer point for the values that you have in your pop-up window to transfer them into your other form so this would be the point where you could transfer values back and forth okay kind of the opposite of what we're implementing now the after create because after create is exactly the point where you would fill your pop-up form with the values that it needs in order to be shown correctly and this is exactly what we're going to do procedure after create and after create which parameters that it have of course it has a reference to the form and this form is of data type t object and not and this is the, the tricky part it's not of the data type that the form actually is so this is not a t form school so this is a t object so we have to typecast so what we're going to do that i don't have to typecast all the time call it l form and this is of data type t form schools and l form equals a form as t form schools so here's the data type and with this data type we can yet again work to access all the fancy stuff that we need and this time we're actually going to make use of it because we want to set the query string of the data set so we are going to say l form data set dot query string and this is where we put in the where we put in the zip code that's supposed to be filtered if we click on the chart let me explain this to you running the application so here we go running the application and if i now click here this 33916 is the zip code of all these schools that are being filtered so this is basically what we have to get we have to get this zip code and this zip code is the label of the data point and this is what we're going to use so before we proceed we have to add a couple of variables first of all we have to have the index of the point and we need the series index of the bar that has been clicked those are helper variables so to speak and as we don't have the compiler ability that delphi rio has that we can declare variables in line we have to do it all here and then we also need the zip code that has been selected and that is of data type string how do we get that and let's jump back into the actual implementation of the method so we get the index of the point and this is something i have not explained so far chart select gives us an event parameter and this parameter if we use code completion here has lots of information and it has the point index and the series index so i'm going to put the point index into pidx and i'm going to put the series index into sidx to make it charter because now in order to get the zip code we have to use chart series which is an array so we use the series index and then we access its values and of course it's the point index point index and of that point we want the data point instance and of that we want the title which is the zip code which we've just seen in the example the title of the data point is the zip code just think about it again we go into the start we select the series using the information that has been handed over to us in the event object look at all the values pick the data point that we've retrieved yet again so the event object instance and then we use the data point property of that and go to the title so this way we get the zip code into lzip and as this after create is a local 
procedure inside of this we can access LZIP at this point. So in order to set the query string of our data set in the pop-up window, we are going to say the query string is filter, which is X data notation, equals zip, which is the property, equals space, and now we add our zip code that we want to display. Okay, so we set the uh, zip code, and now lform dot connection dot connected equals true. So now we can no longer use the standard to the form is being created and the connection is being opened right away. So we have to go back into our U form schools form, click the connection and set connection to false. Otherwise this will fail. You have to set it to false. Go back to the main form. Good. So this should work now like this because we initialized the values correctly. And after setting the query string, we connect to the X data server. We don't want to connect to the X data server before the query string has set. If this is confusing to you, let me show you accessing the X data server manually. So we specify localhost, flex, that's our server. And then we go to the entities, which is schools. And now we can filter question mark and we can specify a filter expression equals zip equals 33928, for example. And this is our variable lzip, which is being taken away, if you look here, from the title of the series. Okay, so this, and then we get this result just with the two schools that are in the 33928 zip district. Okay, that's how it works. Let's see if our application works the same way. So this is still our old application. Let's go back, start, save this. So the data is still being shown, that's good. Let's click on one of the bars. And guess what? It works. Can we close it? Yes, we can. Another one. And you see the data is always different. It's not always the same. There is only one school in that. Here, three schools. So you see, this works pretty well and as expected. Is it a pop-up window? Yes, if I click here around, you can't, might be able to hear me clicking. Nothing happens. But if I click the close button, it closes. Of course, you could make modifications to the grid. You could visualize it differently. Of course, you don't have to use a grid. You can use any other component that you wanted to. And of course, you can add design to this form. But this is the complete example how to build Google Charts based on a database with pop-up window with drill down information from the database yet again using data source and web data sets with design time support with tms web core yes it has been a long and winding road explaining it in detail but let's think about this if you added x data and tms web core to your daily work process how much time can you save considering how much help the design time support gives you, how much flexibility you have picking any data source. The data set is not based on any database. As soon as you use Xdata, Xdata connects to the database and Xdata offers all the industry databases that are standard right now. So your application developers don't have to care about the databases. You actually only need one person connecting the databases to the X data server and then you have maybe different X data servers for different database types and your web application which can also be a desktop application using the electron support is always going to stay the same because it always connects to your standardized company X data server for that purpose and the database becomes totally flexible you don't need to change your application anymore at all and you can access any platform that you want with any framework that you want. I think you have a pretty good tool set using TMS Web Core, Xdata, and in this case, Google APIs like Google Charts and Google Maps.